Just a quick FYI for all my subscribers, I am streaming again on Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, video time, let's go. So with Splatoon 3 being just revealed and the hype being absolutely through the roof, it's a really good time to be a Splatoon player. Certainly better than last year when we got no new content. No, the return Splatfest don't count. The jump from Splatoon 2 to Splatoon 3 is going to be the biggest jump that this franchise has ever seen, considering how Splatoon 2 could have really just been called Splatoon 1.5. Today, I'd like to talk about some concerns I have about Splatoon 3. So firstly, I'd like to talk about the story mode. Nintendo told an amazing story with Splatoon 2 Octo Expansion. The ways that levels were approached was a much needed change from the original, having the player hunt down entrances to find some stupid teapots all over around one of five virtually the same hub worlds to being put in one small hub world and just selecting the level you want to play and putting all of the effort into one level. However, this is Nintendo. They have a tendency of doing an exact 180 on good ideas they make and I'm really hoping that they don't go back on what they've done in Octo Expansion. My next story concern is that they'll delve down the story from the seriousness and deeper concept it had of trying to break free from a sadistic death puzzle to, oh no, the great zapfish is gone, we, we gotta go save the great zapfish and we gotta go get DJ Octavio again. Like, come on Nintendo, Splatoon's player base has an IQ higher than Pearl's, we can deal with the darker concept. Like, the idea of having us choose between chaos versus order, that was a good step. But like I said before, Nintendo's really good at doing the exact opposite of what we want. My last story concern is that it's just going to follow the same hero mode format. Super linear campaign, one boss at the end of the hub world, five hub worlds, Octavio final boss. If we get another Octavio boss battle, I'm never buying another Splatoon ever again. I really don't think this will happen based on the reviews that Octo Expansion got, but to the lore lovers like me of Splatoon, a bad campaign will seriously leave a nasty taste in our mouths, and it could seriously turn a lot of people away from buying Splatoon content in the future, especially if they want to do more single player DLC. Next up, I'd like to talk about Splatoon 3's Horde mode, Splatoon 3's Salmon Run equivalent. There have been a lot of good ideas as to what Splatoon 3's new quote unquote other mode should be, because from what we can see from the Splatoon 3 trailer, it doesn't look like we're going to be fighting Salmonoids anymore. So that leaves us open to an entirely new mode to replace Salmon Run, hopefully one that gets more stages, which is what we'll talk about first. Something that makes literally no sense is how there are only 5 Salmon Run stages. This shouldn't have been the case for Salmon Run, and it most certainly shouldn't be the case for Splatoon 3's Horde mode. I really like what the minds behind the fan-made project Splatoon 3 did for their Mako missions concept. In that fan-made mode, you and your team would be given certain tasks to do, like in Salmon Run, but the stakes are higher as you only have a certain amount of lives to get it done in. Like in Splatoon 2's hero mode, if you run out of lives, you fail the mode. But when you complete the task, you get a brief rest period then jump to a new location. Sometimes you'll have to fight a boss before you can go to a new location too. And I know this may seem a little far-fetched because it's a snowball's chance in hell that Nintendo will actually listen to what fans want, but I'm willing to hold my breath on something like Mako Missions making it into the real Splatoon 3. Nintendo has already shown that they're listening to players based on the feedback we've given them and how they're including the bow and some of the hairstyles that people have been making fan-made. Alright, now let's talk about the bread and butter of Splatoon, the multiplayer, the biggest point of the game. For this I'd like to go over it mode by mode to see what needs to be worked on in my opinion. For Turf War, I don't think there's much that needs to change here besides a few worries I have. Some with the new spawn launcher. I don't want the enemy team to be able to see where we're launching from. The new spawn mechanic is used to combat spawn killing and giving them a good few seconds to see where we're going to launch in from and then going over to swim over to us and then splat us as soon as we touch ground is just going to leave us with the same problem that we had before. For splat zones in all ranked battle modes, I'm worried that the new spawn mechanics aren't going to be used. I think this way because you can still see the old spawners in the maps. I'm really hoping that those are just for show because spawn killing is a big problem in ranked, especially tower control in splat zones. But specifically with splat zones, I'm worried that the new squid charge will be uncounterable in maps that have zones that are part of platforms that are above where the zone starts, like the worst map ever, Kelp Dome. For tower control, it's pretty similar to zones. Spawn killing has been a big problem here as well. But for me in particular, I'd like if when you lost the tower and no one is on it, the speed of the tower should slow down 25%. 
It gives the team that just lost it time to recover from their blunder, and gives the team that just cleared the tower less places to have to run around to go and grab the tower again. For Rainmaker, this one needs a bit more help. So the person with the Rainmaker should have some disadvantages, but in Splatoon 2, the Rainmaker carrier has way too many disadvantages. The Rainmaker fires way too slowly, and the whole it explodes after a second thing is way too big of a disadvantage. The Rainmaker carrier shouldn't be able to win a 4v1, but they should at least stand a chance against someone with a splatter shot trying to get up close into the Rainmaker carrier, because that's really the best way to splat the Rainmaker in Splatoon 2. Get right up close to him, and then splat them before they finish the charge, because it takes way too long to charge the Rainmaker. I think that if the Rainmaker is going to be remade, it should shoot like the new Inzuka we see in the trailer, where it just fires big globs of one-hit kill shots, but maybe the Rainmaker has like a two-ish second countdown before it can fire again. Then the Rainmaker carrier can actually stand a chance, while all of your teammates forget that they're playing Rainmaker and not Turf War. For Clan Blitz, it's simple. Either add voice chat to the game that's easy to connect to your team, or remove the mode. People don't exactly always understand this way and Booyah as the only two forms of communication. So if you don't want to add voice chat to the mode, then remove the mode because there's really only one way to save this mode and it's to let us communicate with each other. The last mode I want to talk about is Splatfest. I have another video planned just about how I want Splatoon 3 Splatfest to work, but that's for another day. But for Splatfest to really be refreshing, Ranked Battle either needs to be included as part of the Splatfest to replace Pro Turf War Battles, or stand alongside it. And in that scenario that it stands alongside it, there'd need to be a 5th category to win so Splatfest can't end in a draw. Shifty Stations absolutely should make a return, but, and I'm personally okay with them just being for Turf War, but if they wanted to build Shifty Stations around Ranked Battle Modes too, I would be okay with that. And on a minor note for Splatfest, Let's not do any more tournament Splatfests, can this can cause serious burnout. Also, the new norm of Splatfest should stick to 48 hours instead of 24, which I think Nintendo planned on having anyway. Finally, the biggest thing for Splatfest, which has the potential to make or break the longevity of this game, is just how many Splatfests we get. Splatoon 3 should last us until the end of the Switch's life cycle. Nintendo confirmed we are halfway through the Switch's life cycle, which tells us that half a life cycle is around 3 to 4 years long, which means we've got another 3 to 4 years left of the Switch, so that means we need 3 to 4 years of Splatfest. That's the worst thing that happened to Splatoon 2, cutting it short with nothing new on the horizon. The fanbase was demotivated and a big chunk of us thought we weren't going to see anything new from the series till 2026 on a new console. We can't be left to feel like that again, and Splatfest are the best and easiest way to ensure this. And in my next video, I'll go in depth on how Splatfest should work in Splatoon 3. It'll be a much better breakdown and deeper depth. Finally, the last thing to not change is the motion controls and how they work. I've seen people in the community want Splatoon's motion controls to work how Doom on the Switches works, where your stick is the main thing you use to look around, and once you finally get to the target, you just use the motion controls to finalize how precise you want everything to be. But I like the way Splatoon 2 does motion controls and don't want to see it change. But anyways, this video is almost double the length of how long my normal videos are, and I think I should cut it here. So uh, I will see you guys next time, and don't forget, next live stream will be on Saturday from 5pm Eastern Standard Time to 7pm Eastern Standard Time. I will see you guys there. If you missed the last one, I feel sorry for you because it was amazing and you should totally be there. We have a lot of fun there and you're going to want to hear the inside jokes. Alright, I will see you guys later.